And now, the journey wraps. ML Data Ops Summit Key Takeaways with Radha Basu, CEO and founder of iMerit. Before I go into my closing session, I want to touch on what has happened in the last two weeks. There have been some unexpected and somewhat controversial events around the story of autonomous vehicles and autonomous technology. That's created a wave of questions about the broader industry. In fact, I've received so many calls about this, not just from the AV folks, but also from enterprise leaders about the adoption and scaling of AI. And we're very fortunate to have and said, this is the right time, it's breaking news, and have brought in Chris Barker, who's a mobility technology leader and autonomous mobility expert. In fact, Chris and I, and we were together at a great event two weeks ago at Carnegie Mellon University, known as the Autonomous Mobility Event. And many of the players in the space over there. And Chris, welcome. And I'd like to hear from you about your perspectives about these tumultuous events that have taken place over the last two weeks. Hi, Rada. It's good to see you again. Uh, yes, so so some interesting news. We, we, we've just learned uh, that Argo AI, one of the large companies, has been advancing a lot of fantastic developments in the autonomous mobility space, is going to be uh, shutting down. Uh, their backing by Volkswagen and Ford is going to, a lot of the technology they've developed will continue on uh, in-house for both vehicle manufacturers. So uh, as a a big shout out to Brian Seleski and Pete Rander and their team for all the tremendous advancements that they've made over the last many years. Indeed. Those technologies will continue on uh, with Volkswagen, uh, with Ford, respectively. Uh, and often when this kind of news comes out, people tend to focus on the headline. Uh, but I think it's really important to focus on is just the tremendous contributions that this organization has made to the advancement of autonomous mobility uh, and everything from mapping to data source analytics to the fact that they've been involved in working across four or five major cities in the United States, as well as in international markets. And so much of their technology will very much go forward uh, into other manifestations of what, where we go next in our journey for autonomous mobility. Uh, but even bigger, uh, as you noted from the event a few weeks ago, there's a lot of things going on in the autonomous mobility industry. Uh, specifically, continued advancement in uh, autonomous mobility for the trucking, freight, and logistics yeah. market. Uh, as we're seeing with companies like Aurora, uh, we're seeing a lot of advancement through uh, the delivery side of things for autonomous mobility through companies like Gaddick. Uh, we're seeing more and more work around autonomous innovation in the manufacturing, warehousing, product delivery side of things. Uh, and then, of course, uh, continued advancements by companies like Waymo and Motional around robo-taxis coming to new markets, uh, new cities across the United States. So it's important to kind of have that big picture view that there's a, a lot happening. Uh, and that even if you see a headline in this case, it's, it's, uh, it needs to be given within the proper context. Yeah, and I think the announcements by Waymo and Cruise, we've had the Waymo speaker here and Zook speakers. And also looking at what's happening in like agriculture and trucks and for different types of uh, autonomous mobility examples, you know, the, there's this uh, view that it brings together, autonomous mobility brings together the ground robots, aerial robots and home robots. And I think that is actually happening. So I'm really, really glad to, um, uh, to get that perspective from you. We think that going forward that this can, um, this is actually really proliferating the market, the entire uh, uh, transportation market and the transportation, whether it's vehicles or different types of things with um, autonomous technologies, regardless of whether they're at level five or four or three, but this is actually leading towards proliferation. Do you agree with that? I mean, that's what I think, but what do you think of that? I do, and I, I think the macroeconomics and the market that we're operating in, both here in the United States, but internationally, we're, we're moving tremendous amounts of uh, product into market through e-commerce. 
Uh, we do have a driver shortage that we're seeing across the trucking side of the business, across transit, and autonomy can play a key role in continuing to move people and goods and freight. And the need for that to continue is just amplifying as we go forward. Uh, so I think there's going to be a tremendous amount of development in fleet operations, in the trucking, freight, and logistics, in, as you mentioned, in the agricultural space that will continue to grow uh, throughout 2023 and well beyond uh, and continue to evolve, you know, as you mentioned, level four and ADAS technologies with the vehicle manufacturers. Okay. That's not going away. That's only going to continue to flourish. Thank you, Chris. I really appreciate you coming on such short notice. Uh, to join us. I'm going to go in now and wrap this up. Um, you know, one of the things is that we're in a phase that all successful technologies go through. When technologies are successful and they're really going to scale, this is what we go through. Commercialization is critical. And one of the things you heard from, from like Seth is it's all about how much money can you make? How much is it saving? And how much is it impacting? And how is making the customer experience better? That's what contributes to a very scaled business. And that is what we're getting into today. We're looking at how the, the need for scaling the data pipeline is actually changing the way on how to, uh, in, in how to overcome the obstacles and how we build our solutions. We're taking AI into production has expanded all the processes to levels that take niche steps and roles in the large scale operations. You might say, well, this is not the sexy AI technology, but this is what's needed when technologies go into full scale and get implemented within enterprises. And that is our view. And that is the view of our panelists and our clients and the people in the industry and how important it is to take that practitioner view and realize that data is data intelligence is at the core of this happening. The need for greater expertise and human involvement at every process, step of the process to ensure the quality, the real time feedback loops become a reality and the need for greater oversight to avoid negative outcomes. These are all the reality of productionizing AI, making sure it's responsible, unintended bias, data drift are all addressed. And this is a combination of the technology, the talent and the technique that I think you will hear from me at every, uh, uh, at every one of these ML Data Ops Summit. This phase brings new challenges but it also leads to much bigger opportunities. I, for one, am very excited to go into this next phase of the scaling of AI in production and the commercialization of AI. Thank you and see you next time.